All right, guys. Welcome to Numbers. This is Rohan Rawal here, and we are going to talk about CET 2016 starting today till 13th of March. So, we have this kind of final countdown by Numbers and CET where we are going to talk about videos on some concepts which are fairly new for CET students. However, very very known to the CAT students. For example, numbers, remainders, and a lot more of LR thing. We'll have mock discussions, okay? Uh, for mock discussions, we'll discuss each and every mock on YouTube or on my website. You can check it out my website www dot numbers dot com, and out there you can find the mocks as well. So you may kind of register for the mocks, and we'll give you mock discussions either on the website or on the YouTube YouTube link itself. And finally, we'll have YouTube live doubt clearing sessions, which will be kept at least thrice a week or something. All right. So today. Since the first day, let's talk about videos on concepts. So today we're going to discuss a concept on HCF and LCA basics because only the basics come in CET on these two areas. So the next thing that will follow is my video on HCF and LCM. Have a nice time watching it. Okay. Apart from that, you can purchase my videos by clicking the link above. And again, the mock discussion or the mocks you can purchase on www.numbers.com. All the very best for CET. Hope you have a great time watching the video ahead. Asked you, you said full forms. Okay, let's see if in LCM have a look. Let's say I have two numbers six and eight. Okay. Now six when I factorize, I get two threes are six. Eight when I factorize, I get two fours are eight. All right. I get two common in both of these, and I say LCM of six and eight is going to be two because two is something that I can take common from both of these. Why do I say it is highest common? Because I cannot take anything more common because the remaining numbers are three and four. So in that, I can write the first number as HCF into something can be the first number. Let's say n one. HCF into some other thing is the second number. So two numbers can be always expressed as H A and H B, where H is their HCF and A and B are something that do not have anything more in common. So if A and B are something that don't have anything more in common, A and B are also called as co-primes. Co-prime means two numbers that behave like prime numbers with respect to each other. For example, three and four are co-primes. They must not be primes as such. For example, four here is not a prime number, right? But they behave prime mutually with respect to each other. They are co-primes. They are primes. Sixteen twenty-five. Sixteen has just twos in it. Twenty-five has just fives in it. Co primes, okay. Let's say one more example. Forty and forty-nine. Now forty has two and five, and forty-nine just has seven. This is a seven, and this is two and five. They are co primes. You understand that? So two numbers can always be defined as H A and H B. Their H is their H C F, and A and B are co primes. Okay, always. So if these two are the numbers, what is the H C F? H. What is the L C M? You take the HCF once and multiply the rest. HAB. The HCF here in this case comes both the times, right? But you take it only once and you multiply the rest. Three and four. Two into three into four is twenty-four. That will become the LCM for these two numbers, six and eight. So what's the HCF? Two. What is the LCM? Twenty-four. So how do you get the HCF? H. How do you get the LCM? HAB. All right. Let's say I multiply these two. HCF into LCM will become H into HAB. What is H into HAB? H square AB. What is H square AB? HA into HB. What is H into HB? Product of numbers. So you can always say that LCM into HCF is going to be product of numbers. So in this case, we can just look at it again. Two into twenty-four is how much? Forty-eight, and forty-eight is nothing but six into eight. Right, so you can just multiply the HCF and LCM, and you get the multiplication of the numbers actually. Okay, and another important, another important concept. Okay, so I'll just redefine this. The numbers henceforth will always be H A and H B. Look at the advantage that this method has. One of the biggest advantage. Let's say I ask you to find out what is the HCF of one 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 four, and let's say one one three nine. What is the HCF of these two numbers? You got to factorize them first, and then do a lot of like you know, like first finding factor itself is a pain. You don't know what factors will these numbers have. 
So when you have these two kind of numbers, find the HF of this number and this number. All you gotta do is subtract. Subtract the smaller one from the larger one. You get one one three nine minus one 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 four. How much is this? Twenty five. Okay. What are the factors of twenty five? Twenty five has three factors: one, five, and twenty five. You tell me one thing. Can twenty five divide any of these two? No. Can five divide any of these two? No. So the answer is HCF is one. Keep in mind, HCF of two numbers is always a factor of the difference of two numbers. Why do you get that? Because HA and HB when subtracted, I get H common A minus B. So HCF here becomes a factor of the subtraction. You want to find out HCF of any two numbers? Subtract them. Okay. Let's try to find out the HCF of seventy-four and sixty-eight. I'll just subtract. What is seventy-four minus sixty-eight? Six. What are the factors of six? One. Two, three, and six. Check for six. Can this divide six? No. Can this divide two, three? No. Can this divide two? Yes. And that will become the HCF. That's why we always start from the highest number, which is six. So we'll try finding six if it's the HCF of these two. Doesn't work. Six doesn't work because sixty-eight cannot divide six. Neither can seventy-four. However, okay. Then what do we do? Check for the next number. Next highest number is three. Three cannot be divided in sixty-eight or seventy-four either. So the answer is the next highest which is two, which can divide, which can divide by both of these. So the answer is two becomes the HCF of these two numbers. Are we clear? HCF of two numbers is always a factor of the subtraction of two numbers. I'm sorry for this. HCF of two numbers is always what? The factor of subtraction of these two numbers. Okay. So I'll repeat this. Let's say one more example. One one four seven, and let's say. One one two one. Find the HCF of these two. No one one two one. For for starters, let's keep one one two zero. Let's find the HCF of these two numbers. What are the what are the difference by the way? Twenty seven. Factor is twenty seven. I have one. I have three. I have nine, and I have twenty seven. So one. I'll have one more. One three nine and twenty seven. Correct. One twenty seven. Correct. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. These four factors. Can these two divide twenty-seven? No, because the sum itself is four. For division of twenty-seven, it should be at least multiple of nine. Then we can start going ahead. It is not a multiple of nine, but in any way, so doesn't matter. Can it divide nine? No. Can it divide three? No, for the same reason. So the answer is one. So the answer of these two numbers is going to be one. Are we clear? The first type of question on HCF is going to be this. The next type, type two on HCF and LCM, can be this. Take a question. The HCF of two numbers is eight, and the LCM is two forty. HCF is eight, LCM is two forty. Find how many numbers satisfy this. How many pairs exist AB such that their HCF is eight and LCM is two forty? Just out of this, how do you define numbers H A and H B? Okay, so H A and H B are the numbers. In other words. 8A and 8B are numbers because H is the HCF. What is the LCM? HAB. So HAB is going to be 240. So what is AB? 30. What are AB? AB are two numbers that are multiplied later, right? So let's find out how many ways AB can be 30. Start. 1 and 30 is 30. Then 215 is 30. 310 is 30. 56 is 30. Yeah. So how many numbers are possible? Four pairs are possible. You want to find the numbers? You can find the numbers also. For example, substitute A is one and B is thirty here. Okay, so what do you get? Eight as it is, and two forty. The first pair is this. How do you get the next pair? A is two and B is fifteen. What is eight two's up? Sixteen. Eight fifteen's up. Difficult, right? Eight fifteen's up. Is there a way? Eight into fifteen. Push the two inside. I told you four and thirty, one twenty. Next pair is this. Third pair is eight threes are twenty-four and eight tens are eighty. And the last pair is eight fives are forty and eight sixes are forty-eight. These are the pairs of numbers whose HCF is going to be eight, but LCM is going to be and LCM is going to be two forty. Are we clear? Just find out AB and that many pairs. They will not ask you find the numbers. They will just ask you find how many pairs. So here itself, we get the answer. The answer is four pairs. Okay. Keep in mind there can be a variation here. 
they can ask you how many pairs or they can ask you how many ordered pairs when they say when they say ordered pairs ordered means they can be flipped so you count basically permute you count the orders of all these so how many orders possible to each so it's going to be how many eight so if you have a question that says ordered pairs the answer is eight if you have a question how many pairs the answer is four clear all right so easy just divide the hcf hab is the lcm and you get ab and then find out okay let's do one more question on the same type take it down please hcf of two numbers is 11 and the lcm is 220 how many ordered pairs possible how many ordered pairs possible hcf is 11 lcm is 220 what do you do hab is the lcm right what is hab 11 ab is 220 So what is AB? Twenty. Let's find out. One twenty is a twenty. Two twenty tens are twenty, and four fives are twenty. Yes. How many pairs possible? Three pairs. But ordered six pairs. However, that's incorrect. The answer is four pairs. Because two and ten are not allowed. Why two and ten are not allowed? I mentioned this earlier. That A and B are what? Two primes. Co prime means they shouldn't have anything in common. Two and ten have a two in common. They can give two more to the HCF, right? So they'll never make the HCF twenty. They'll in fact make the HCF as, sorry. They can never make the HCF as eleven. They'll make the HCF as eleven two or twenty two because they have two extra to give because both of them have a two. So A and B are two numbers that don't have anything in common. Now since you've got two tens, ah, which has a two in common, it is not allowed. So how many are allowed? Only the first and last one. So how many ordered pairs? Four ordered pairs are allowed. Normal pairs two is the answer. Ordered pairs four is the answer. Just ask you pairs. It's two. They ask you ordered. It's four. Normal pair क्या होता है? Pair होता है. ये pure veg restaurant. That's all. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so pairs is two and ordered is four. Are we clear? We will not include two and ten because two and ten have further common. What is the common thing in there? Two. Okay. That's why I gave this question specifically. Got an idea of HCF and LCM completely? Yeah. That's it precisely about HCF and LCM. Okay. One question you can have an LCM is this. Look. There are two. There are five bells. A B C D E. Five bells. 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 Okay. The first bell tolls every two seconds. The next three seconds. The next every four seconds. The next every five seconds. The last one every ten seconds. These are the tolling speeds. Okay. They toll together at twelve o'clock. When will they toll again together? Yeah. So now we know this guy is going to have two seconds interval. This is going to have three second interval. This is going to have four second interval. Five and ten. What I do is, I take the LCM of these numbers. Why? I tell you. What is the LCM of these numbers? Sixty. Yeah, sixty is the LCM of these numbers. Why taking the LCM? Because the ten guy will also be at sixty. Fifth guy will also toll at sixty seconds. Everybody will toll at the same time, which is after sixty seconds. Means there has to be a multiple of all the numbers. That will be the number total, total time that you have, 60 seconds. Okay. So in 60 seconds, the two second one will toll, the three second one will toll, the four will toll, five will toll, and ten will toll. So they toll together basically how many seconds? 60 seconds. So at what time they'll toll next time? Together, 12 1 p.m. Twelve one p.m. Are we clear? So in 60 seconds they will come together again. Okay? Yeah. How many times 60 seconds? How do you get? I'll just repeat this. How do you get 60 seconds? This guy is two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. This guy will keep going like two, four, six, eight, ten. This guy will be like six, nine, twelve. This guy will be like eight, twelve, blah, 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 whatever. Five, ten, fifteen, ten, twenty, thirty. You have to find a time common in all these five columns. 
and the time that will come common in all these five columns is gonna be 60 seconds. Because 60 seconds will come in this column, this column, this column, this column, and this column. What is 60? A multiple of all this least common multiple. Perfect. So in 60 seconds they'll toll again together. Okay, the question were how much time might have they told together? I mean, how much time they might have told till 60 seconds got over? This guy would have told 30 times. This will be his 30th toll. This guy, 20. This guy, 15. This guy, 10. And this guy, 6. Okay? These are respective tolls when they come together. Okay? So you can find that tool. So easy. Just divide by 60 and you go ahead. Okay? Yeah, precisely that's it. This, this can be the only thing that can be asked to you in the exam. Let's move ahead. Let's do something else. Take the next topic, please. Cubes.